Spartan Nation. SMD Law is the official law firm of the Spartan Nation. Check them out on the interwebs at smdalaw.com or at 866-529-3537. No matter where you are in the state of Michigan, Upper Peninsula, Lower Peninsula, it doesn't matter. They have an office near you. So whether you need to send a letter to an annoying neighbor, or you're a criminal and you need defense, maybe you just have problems with elder law. Check them out, smdalaw.com today. The official law firm of the Spartan Nation. Call them first, then you act. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back, Spartan Nation. It's now time to bring in Spartan Nation senior writer, the great Johnny Shop, for our weekly state of Michigan State Athletics. John, how are you? Not bad, Hondo. We're clicking the way, clicking the way through May soon to be june not too far after june things get a little more serious absolutely can't wait for football john i want to kick it with you this morning this, this, this today by starting with a subject that is about michigan state athletics but not specific sport um i'm a free market capitalist i don't hide that i, I believe in the free market i believe it's what one of the brilliance of our founding fathers and when they put up the new press box at Michigan State they now serve alcohol if you're a donor and can afford to be in the press box but it's not for sale outside now this I'm not going to get into the morality of drinking or not drinking because I know some people care some don't care I'm not getting into that but purely from a financial standpoint I think it's ridiculous the school does not sell alcohol at the Breslin or at the the, the football games up for the general crowd. I think it would cut down on all the binge drinking out in the parking lots because people know they can go inside and drink. Obviously, beers are going to be a lot more expensive inside than out, so I think you're going to have people who won't drink as much because of the cost. I just don't see what's wrong with it. Where am I? What am I missing, John? Because the athletic director said last week he's not doing it. Well, it sounds like there may be a state law in Michigan that is uh, stepping in here. Uh, and the big thing that's being missed is an opportunity to educate. Um, there's no reason that the university should stop educating at the point of the books. People in society, in the state of Michigan and beyond, need to understand how to use, consume, and enjoy alcohol in a responsible manner. And at this point in time, coming around to 2020, college football is a great place to do so. So, yeah, I think Michigan State's missing a lot here. It's not like other schools in the country and even in the Big Ten haven't had experience and success doing it. There is a way in Y2K19, not even let alone Y2020, that they could figure out a way with apps and phones and all kinds of stuff to go ahead and secure the operation so it's consumed safely and responsibly. And I think that revenue-wise, there's no question it would add a little bit. That being said, the Big Ten revenue numbers were just so big, it's not as if Michigan State looks like they are in desperate need of an extra couple million dollars from the alcohol. But I take it as an opportunity missed to educate, and I hope it's something that they go ahead and fix for the year 2020. Well, John, unfortunately, you're wrong. They do need the money desperately. Um, so, so that is, I mean, with all the money coming in, they still need more for reasons that you know Spartan Nation has has trumpeted for a long time. Uh, I want to talk to you next because I think this is a fascinating one, and it's the state of athletics in general. Um, we both know this. Duffy Doherty was coach when I was young, and everyone acted like the glory days of Duffy would never go, and they did. And then we went through the dark ages until Mark D'Antonio came. Basketball has been able to stay on a pretty successful level because it went from Judd, I mean, from Gus to Judd to, to Tom. Yep. But the days of of just success always happening are not reality to be sustained. When no. they when they started to do personal seat licenses, John, I I told you this story years ago. I begin to say it's fine when you're winning, but the moment you stop, you've now priced out all of your donors and the people that are there, no matter what, and your Big money corporations and all of that, which God bless him, you need them, aren't going to buy tickets if you suck. Are you concerned? I believe that Michigan State is in a very precarious situation. I do not have faith in the university, should there have to be a change in football or whatever right now, that it would necessarily be handled well. Do you feel like with all of the changes to tailgating, they've now closed off Munn Field permanently? John, are they alienating the fan? 
Yeah, they certainly have. And what they need to understand uh, from top to bottom is that they're selling an entertainment experience first. Um, college football in as a whole has suffered a little bit from this propensity as fans on a whole and largely in, in the more extraordinary environments in the Southeast Conference and in the South. People are coming to games more to win than to have a good time. I will give them that, and that's not good. But fans coming to Michigan State University for football are looking for an entertainment experience first. And when you strap that down and when you peel it away and when you seem unreasonable relative to the people you're competing with, the schools in the region and the schools in the, in the country, you're going to get a backlash. When you add that with the demographics of who comes to games at Michigan State, it is not easy. It has only become more difficult to get out of the house, get loaded up, get all the way up 96 uh, across 94 and up 127, wherever you're coming from to get there. So Michigan State University has gone the wrong way. They need to reverse course and in, encourage and make it easier to enjoy the tailgate atmosphere, the game day atmosphere, closer to the stadium. This is a big mistake that they've made. they gotten away with it for a decade or so. If things don't go well early this fall, they may have plenty of space and not really any kind of need to worry about how much folks are going to show up for tailgating. They are on the edge. The concern I have looking from the outside in is that the people inside that zip code do not yet get it. They got a clue in. The great John Shop. John, you just said something that I have written several times lately. I don't know if you've noticed it. Yep. But I have written this for several months. I don't think there's anybody over there who's paying attention to the warning signs. I don't think they're bad people. I just don't think – I think they're completely clueless to the mood of their fan base. Am I wrong? No, I mean there's a propensity typically to kind of keep doing things the way that we've been doing them, and we'll probably get about the same result. But they're really badly missing this. Um, fans that are 40 and below don't know much better than the way things have been, and they've only seen it come backwards. Fans that are 40 and above – still have some memory of Munfield and some other experiences that I don't have, quite frankly, because they weren't there during my era. And those are also fans that are now looking, uh, going to be more looked upon to buy season tickets and bring their families and, and bring their folks um, along with them, their friends to the game. I don't think they get it. You know, you can have the best, most organized, safest tailgate operation in the Big Ten at Michigan State. The tools are there. And it's not going to be long, I don't think. I think it'll be less than 10 years until somebody figures out that we got to do this another way. And once they do, it's going to seem like a watershed moment, like, oh, boy, well, you know, what did we do here? And perhaps that is with the new coaching and athletic administration. Maybe that's when the change will be made just because of the timing of things. But in the meantime, Michigan State's got to do a little more to preserve its game day environment and try to fill more seats. I get that TV money is the number one driver, and that's not going to change. But as far as the team itself, individual support's got to still matter. And Michigan State University's gotten in its own way of getting the most fans that it can into each Spartan game. Totally agree. John, I want to talk to you about one other subject. Um, Mark Hollis went to the MSU Board of Trustees prior to his resignation and said, listen, I didn't have any – job as an overseer to Larry Nasser. I've never met Larry Nasser. Yep. Larry Nasser is not even under my purview. <clears throat> He's not even under my supervision. And he asked the board to come out when he was being salaciously attacked and say, all I'm asking you to do is tell the truth that I didn't do anything wrong. We know this. This is a fact. This is not up for investigation. The yeah. board told him, no, 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 no. You just need to wait. We don't need to make any statements. We don't want to offend the media. And so when Hollis was under attack for something he did not do, nor was it under his purview, and the board refuses to endorse him, he left. But that same board, when they're telling him, no, 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 we just need to wait, went out and full-throatedly, every single one of them. Now, the next day, Mitch Lyons did say that he – he regretted it and, would, and, and withdrew it. But the point is they all did it and stood up there and supported Luana Simon, who is absolutely neck deep into this in her own trial, who knows if she'll be convicted or not. 
If Luann Simon is convicted, I am going to call on the governor of the state of Michigan to remove every single trustee who went out there and full-throatedly endorsed her regardless of their political bent. I don't care if the governor, who is a Democrat, gets rid of every Republican that did and replaces them with Democrats. Uh, to me, this is a non-political issue. Any trustee that let Mark Hollis walk when they wouldn't do the truth but full-throatedly endorsed her if she's found guilty should be removed. Agree or disagree, you're an attorney. Well, it's a tricky one. Um, you know, when you look at it from outside in, it looked like Michigan State and Mark Hollis specifically, it looked like they already knew that they were cleared because of some of the work that was done. And the timing of things coming together, they just didn't handle it well. The trustees didn't handle it well. Um, I don't I don't think anybody handled it really well. Um, so I, you understand that situation to be the way you laid it out. You can't necessarily blame Mark Hollis. Uh, if the trustees failed to assert truths that they knew from those that they didn't, there probably should be some accountability for the good of the university. This is something that obviously was an incredible criminal attack and a very successful criminal mind that pulled all this off. But that doesn't necessarily reserve or remove what happened around Michigan State University and the trustees. So there's a huge difference between negligence and criminal negligence. I think we need to keep that in mind. Any criminal negligence is going to be met with a whole different um, set of circumstances than negligence itself. But Michigan State being a relatively conservative place in these kind of matters should probably err on the side of caution. And if there's an appearance that something went foul, if there's an appearance that the trustees dropped the ball that far, yeah, they probably all should be replaced and the house should be cleaned. And I think the university would probably be better off for that in the long run. You clearly sounded like a politician. So I'm going to ask the question again because I really want to get to your heart, not the attorney. Sure. Hollis went to them and said, you know what's being said is untrue. They agreed. He said, my kids are getting attacked in school. Will you please just come out and tell people the truth? I'm not asking you to lie. Yeah. No, 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 no. We're just going to wait, Mark. You're okay. Your job is safe, Mark. Everyone knows you didn't do anything wrong. You're fine. Well, they're wanting to do nothing to Hollis. He was man enough to say, I'm not letting my kids go through this. Not doing it anymore. You yeah. people want to be silent. So they wouldn't endorse I him. But their endorsement of Luana, if she's found guilty, we're not talking about, I'm not talking about these people should go to prison or jail. I'm not talking about that. I'm just no. talking about for the common sense of the university, they should get their asses booted out. Am I wrong? No, you're probably right. And, and the only thing I wish, selfishly, I wish would have happened is that Mark Hollis would have stood up and said, look, I have, and I mean, he kind of tried to did a little bit, but be a little louder and say, of course, I have nothing to do uh, with this guy. I have no idea who this guy is. I mean, the perspective was lost on how big the school and the university is relative to what Luanna K. Simon is dealing with, relative to what Mark Hollis is dealing with. And again, I also think that a lot of people suffered from the fact that they understood that they were all cleared and, and have still stood to be cleared. Um, they they kind of got that news too far ahead of the fact, and it, it it just didn't they didn't handle it well as a whole. It's he, all really, really just too bad. He is the great Spartan Nation senior writer, John Shop. We'll be back. Senior writer, John Shop. We'll be back. Senior writer.